The right email address is right here on the screen. Can you guys, do I need to make this email address bigger? Maybe it's not visible enough. Maybe I should put it like at the top of the screen or something like that. It might not be big enough, but it's the Soto podcast at gmail.com. This is not the you dig. <laughs> Since people keep wanting to think about what we did three years ago and that they, you know, they were a part of something three years ago and blah, blah, blah. Well, look, man, we are something different now. We are the AFC, the Advocates for Children. You know, especially to these video, these people that keep making videos about me and Tommy. We don't want to, we don't want to keep giving them reminders of what used to be, what could have been and all that, blah, blah, blah. No, we have moved on. I really wish those people would move on. Guys, notice I don't call them people out by name. I ain't got nothing to say about them because I don't have nothing nice to say about them. So you know what they say. If you ain't got nothing nice, nice to say, then don't say it at all, right? So let me go ahead and, well, let me say I got two emails. You like the debate. Good deal. Let me give you my number. I'm going to give you my number. And I ask that if I trust you to give my number to, do not give my phone number out. That'll be a violation of your probation. Do not give my number out to anybody for any reason. Okay. So I'm going to give you my number. I'm not going to give your name out because I don't know if you want your name out, but to the person that just emailed me, I just gave you my number. So to R the first initial R I just gave you my number. You sent email twice, so that's good. <clears throat> Let me see, I got one more email. Okay, good. So you did get my email. Okay, good. Uh oh. All right. Okay, hello. It's Parker Lynn. How you doing, Jay? Hey, hey, what's going on, Parker Lynn? Nothing. Nothing. I kept saying, I want to talk. I want to talk real quick. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. Okay, yeah. I just want to make. Uh, hold, I just can, want to make one point. Hold on, can can you give me just a second while I still got a few people in here? I need to shout these out real quick. It, it's just the people that donate. Okay. If you don't mind, I'm gonna read these real quick. I need to say. Thank you to April Jones said, hey, Jay, couldn't stay for the entire show. Today is my daughter's passing away. Oh, okay, man. Thank you. Sickens me that so many women choose to kill their innocent babies. Feel better soon. Thank you to uh, Lyric Speaks in the chat. I love your channel. Stay blessed. That's from Joan. Joan, if you're listening, thank you very much. This one came from Maurice, first time donator. Thank you very much, Maurice. This one came from Smiles and Twisted MD. If you're still listening, thank you very much. Michelle Glass donated twice. Thank you. SH Play, thank you. Shout out to my brother, Relationship Rehab, and Mark Adams. And also thank you to the guy who donated in the uh, super chat. I can't remember who it was, but thank you. Um, Parker Lynn, I didn't mean to hold, make you hold on for that, but I would love to hear your thoughts. Go ahead. First off, my condolences to April. So sorry to hear about your loss. Um, what I wanted to discuss was throughout the history of watching your podcast and watching other um, televised shows or other podcasts that discuss uh, women um, either killing their children or um, doing a suicide along with their kids. Because another one just happened this past week. I just saw on another podcast where it was twin babies and their mother killed them. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't remember where it was out of. But my my conclusion that I've come to believe is that when a mother does this, in some cases it is mental illness. But you can control your mental capacity to an extent because you know what you're doing. Because if you know what insanity is within the court, they're not going to allow you off because it's like we know mindfully you knew what you were doing. Mm -hmm. I think that might play some part in it, but I think a lot of times it is dealing with the male. It's either because they're stressed because they don't get any contribution from their uh, from the children's father or they're having it out with the children's father or the, the father wants to take custody of the kids because of the parenting of that mother or them feeling that they should have the child full-time, or if they don't get to see their child enough, they'll take them to court and battle with them. So in some cases, they want to, you know, uh, perish their children because they don't want to go back and forth in the court system. In some cases, the mother is stressed out 
full of anxiety. She just gets to a point where she's livid, especially if she's gone through postpartum, mm-hmm. or just mad at the mate because he no longer wants her. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. In a lot of those instances, that's what's occurred. Because if you look, a few of those cases, they've always killed a couple of their kids, but they've let another set of their kids live. Oh, yes, so you, you, are, you are right. You are right about that. I, I've done a few of those stories. Where they'll, where they'll pick yeah. and choose which kids they want to kill. Right, right. And you'll find that they got different fathers. Mm. Great point. Go ahead. Great point. You know, so that's just, it just makes me think that in a lot of those instances, if you go back and look at data, I would think the situation with the little girl out of Ohio where the boyfriend and the mom was just convicted, he had been fighting to get custody of the daughter. He's mm-hmm. not knowing what was going on. Another incident happened like that in Ohio. And then, like I said, this in- incident that I just heard about today where these two-year-old twins, their mother killed them, and she tried to say it was bipolar and mental illness. Mm-hmm. But her mother said, her mother said, well, we knew she had mental problems. We knew that things weren't going right. Well, if you knew that, why weren't you trying to take custody of the kids? Oh, yep. That's a fact. And and that's part of where I try to hold the family and relatives accountable, where I'm just like, if this is something they've been to, well, she's been suffering for years. And I'm just like, and y'all let this go on and you allow this person to bring children into this world and care for these kids. And they probably not even checking on the well-being of these kids, knowing that this person has been deemed as mentally unstable. Because in the black community, what we fail to do is we overlook things. We'll be like, oh, well, the child's fed. It's not, they're not malnourished. Mm-hmm. You see that they have on nice, clean clothes. We don't see any visible bruises. So you figure the child is not being abused. There's other, there's other ways to abuse a child, and it does not mean it has to be physical. Just because you well kept the child, it does not mean that that mother's not going through something in that house and taking that child through the situation with them. So we, as black people, need to stop, do, black mothers, or mothers in general just need to stop doing, well, oh, they look well-kept, and they don't have any problems in school, and so it seems like they're okay. Because that's a selfish behavior. It's like, I don't want to deal with the situation. So if the baby looks okay, we're going to leave it at that. Mm-hmm. I agree. You know? So that was my input. That's all I wanted to say. Because it just really got to me. It's like, damn. Another, because I thought this was the topic you were going to talk about is these two year olds that I just saw um, on another page. And I think they were Ohio. I'm not sure it was Ohio. And they were two years old and their mother killed them. She actually manually killed them with her hands. How could you do that? Yep. Where she, she, where she, them. Where she strangled them with, with her bare yes. hands. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes. So. Okay, I'll let other people call in, but I had to, to put my two cents in. Not a problem. Hey, look, man, not only do you contribute to the show, but like I said, I mean, especially, you know, when people support us, I ain't got no problem with, you know, like I'm, I might request like a certain type of call, which is fine. But like I said, I mean, you've supported. I, I, I you know, I hear from you any point in time, you know, and you bought a T-shirt. <laughs> so. I love my T-shirt. You all go on his, his website and get a T-shirt. I love them. It's really nice. Yeah, for sure, man. Definitely. Thank you so much. Like I say, Parker, Parker Lee, and anytime you want, man, just let me know. All righty. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. Good deal, man. And um, and she actually sent me a photo of her in the, in the shirt. She actually sent me a photo of her in the shirt, which I thought that was dope. So that's cool. All right. May I ask who I'm on the line with? Um, hi, this is um, Mia Pia. Mia Pia, That's what is going on? How are you? I'm good. All right. You, and you want to challenge me on my on my thoughts and opinions, right? No, no, no. I think it was a, a misunderstanding. Uh, what I wrote, uh, well, I guess what was perceived in the chat. I, I do believe that, um, well, I call them male and female breeders. Um, um, I, I wasn't only... Oh, what the hell just happened? She said she wanted to uh, talk about her comment on the male breeders, but s- s- the phone just cut out. I'm assuming that's not my phone. I'm going to give her a second to see if she calls back. 
Don't know what just happened. I'm going to try to call her back. Ooh, Jesus, that's loud. Okay, we got another person calling in. Hold on. Okay. If you're calling in, call, call in again. The phone just dropped out. I don't know why. Let me, matter of fact, let me try to refresh it. I don't know what in the world just happened. So, Mia P, if you're listening, call back in. I think somebody else is trying to call in also. What happened to your phone number? Oh man, that's all right, man. Ask who I'm on. May I ask who I'm on the line with? This is um Rock and Robin. Uh oh, you gotta uh, pause me in the uh, on the show. Pause the show for me if you would. I'm sorry. What was that? <laughs> if you would, like, make sure and pause the YouTube. I can hear myself. Okay. So, what do you want me to do? Close the YouTube. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. I'm trying. Oh, there we go. I just I just muted it. Is that better? <laughs> yes, that's better. How are you? Oh, I'm good. This is the first time I've called in, but I've watched your show a lot, and I appreciate the difference that you're you're trying to make. And I know it's going to take a village to turn things around. I mean, I just feel like I've just we're just constantly hearing about these the deaths of these little children and. You know, CPS is involved, and, and there's reports of mental illness, and there's all the red flags. And, you know, we've got to figure out a better way to um, deal with these mothers that are in crisis. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, you know, I say all the time, um, and I'm calling from Baltimore City, basically, you know, pregnancy is preventable. Oh, yeah, Young women out there true. make make a different choice. Don't choose babies right away. <laughs> but, you know, in this particular case, Jay, you know, the mother was older. She was 44 years old. Yes, she was. And she had and these it, kids at around age 33. Not in her 20s, not in her teens. She had children that were in their 30s? No, no, no. I said she had these twins. Like, if the twins were nine years old, and she's 44, then I would assume that she probably had him at about 33. Exactly. So she wasn't like a teenage mother. There she, you go. She had, she had as if these were the only two children she had. Mm -hmm. But again, it seemed like her mother lived right across the street, and I keep thinking, where's the rest of the family? Mm -hmm. You know, where is the, you know, I know like in that case down in, um, I believe it was in, well, it might have been Ohio, where the grandmother wasn't allowed to see the child, and they weren't sending the little girl to school, and they were homeschooling her. Tiffany Moss, I think, was the name of the stepmother. That Tif got, Tiffany, she e got death. Don't, don't ask me how I remember this. Tiffany Imani Moss. I, I, my memory is horrible, so don't ask how I remember that. Tiffany Imani well, Moss. What was well, Imani was the little girl, but the, the stepmother's name was Tiffany Moss, and she got death. Hmm. And I, I was really glad that she got death. I really was so proud of the jury. Um, but I just don't understand, you know, what we are doing wrong and why does this keep happening? You know, I mean, is CPS understaffed, overworked? You know, well, um, actually, you know what? I actually have done some stories where we found out that they have taken more caseload than they're actually legally allowed to. So that is some of the case, but uh, again, most of where I'm trying to put this blame on is for the parents. So if we understand that we have a system that's overworked, it's kind of like if we understand that the jails are overpacked, then what do we need to do? Stop committing crimes. It's almost like we, 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 we act like we don't have a choice in creating children. And, and once we create children, knowing that we can't afford to, there's a lot of things that end up happening. We end up putting more stress on our welfare system. And on top of that, you're going to end up having these situations where, 
you know, people that aren't doing what they're supposed to do financially for these kids. They come and investigate. They find out that they're that they're doing wrong to these kids or not providing the, the things that these kids need. They take the kids and then put them into a system that's already sweltered as it is. So the system was never built for this. You, you kind of get where I'm coming from? The system was what? The system was never built for this. It was never built well, to house all of these kids, to take all of these kids. Like it's kind of like, like they have way too much going on, and we really should, as people, look at it and say, what can we do to prevent our kids from getting to this state? You know. Well, we don't have orphanages anymore. They just have they just have foster care. They just have foster homes. They do have group homes here in Baltimore. We do have group homes. But they have a very limited capacity, and I even worked at one. And it was a, it was a facility that was just for boys. Um, and many of these kids come in there, and they're so psychologically damaged, and they come in there on a on a cocktail of drugs. It's the only way they can control them, and then eventually they age out of the system. Mm -hmm. They age out. They 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 can't live there anymore. They've got to go. I don't know where they put them. But, you know, they, it's just, it's a mess. And I have an immediate uh, family member who's learning disabled who has four illegitimate children by four different fathers. Mm -hmm. And it is a nightmare. And I've been there when the social worker comes. He just doesn't see it. I'm telling you. He does. He goes, well, I can listen, it's not safe here. These, you know, she, I, I hear stories from the neighbors. And he goes, well, I don't see any bruises. Uh they seem like, you know, they're not starving. Um, uh, the one hit his head, and she knew to, you know, call the ambulance. And But it's, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I just, it's very frustrating for me. And I really think that um, all four of these kids are going to have foster care eventually because my niece really only has a, she had meningitis as a baby. And I kept saying to my sister, you need to get her on birth control. You need to mm -hmm. get her birth control. It's happened once. Don't let it happen again. And what did it do? It happened three, a uh, Debbie. You know, pregnancy is preventable. And she, uh, this last baby that she just had a year ago, now they, they did a complete hysterectomy. I don't know why they didn't do it sooner. But anyway, now there are four kids in the system mm -hmm. with a mother that can barely read. That is, and my sister passed away, so that just added, added more trauma to the situation. Because as long as she was alive, she was able there to sort of, you know, sort of supervise things, I guess I should say. But I don't know. It's We have a lot of work to do. Yeah, I agree. Are uh, you there? Yep, yep, I can hear you. I said I agree with you. Can you hear me? Oh, okay. Well, I guess she might not have heard me. I said, I said, yes, I Thank you for the call. Boom. All right, let me go ahead and call Mia Pia back. <phone rings> Mia, if you're listening, I'm ready for you. Oh. Okay, is this Mia Pia? Yes. I'm all ears. Go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. Where do we leave off? We were, we were we were talking about baby breeders. <laughs> oh, yes. That's that's the term I use for them. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that um, why well, I want to apologize, I guess, for what I typed originally in the comment section got maybe misconstrued uh, incorrectly. Um, I'm not saying for this case that um, uh, because there was no male there, you know, it, I'm blaming the males in the situation. I said that um, I honestly think that in most situations, these males, when they get with these females, I don't... I think maybe they're either tricked or they don't really realize they, they don't see the signs or they ignore the red flags of these, of these females who do these things and that they have, unlike the children, the innocent children, they have the freedom of removing themselves from that situation, like physically, unlike these children who are, uh, are stuck or bound to these, um, these so-called mothers. So in that case, um, these um, I think mentally deranged individuals, these females who are, I call them female breeders, they know that they have that power and that control over these children. And to spite that, that, that male, you know, the one who not is now realized that or see through, 
really see that see that person for themselves. They have they have, they now t- try to take that anger out, try to harm that child. And I think that's in this situation and many of these situations, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And and as you're talking and when you're giving me responses, what I'll end up doing is I'll end up typing because I don't ever want to cut you off because my whole point is to kind of hear your perspective because everybody's already heard my perspective. But okay. yes, Jason got caught that. He heard what I heard. And you mentioned two things. You said the mm-hmm. word tricked, T-R-I-C-K-E-D. And then you also said that the mothers don't see the red flags. Am I accurate? No, no. Oh gosh, no! Not the mothers, the the the, the, the males, and I'm, I mean, of course, there's there's fathers, and there's, there's there's male breeders. When I say male breeders and female breeders, they're both those those are things I think I think those are two different, um, obviously two different type of people I'm describing. Okay. When I when I pres- when I speaking about male breeders and not fathers, real fathers, real men, um, but when I'm speaking about male breeders, those are individuals who are just as toxic as the females, and these are innocent children who are born in toxic situations where the females are just as deranged as the males. Mm-hmm. I'm the guy, I'm saying from speaking that from personal experience. Okay. But there are males who, you know, sort of saying they don't really, they, sometimes they do see these um, females, uh, later on they see these toxic signs and they, sometimes they choose to ignore it. Sometimes some females are really good at hiding that. They, and I've seen that. I'm, I'm pretty young. I mean, I've just, I just got out of college. And when I was on campus, I noticed that there were a lot of, females who were threatened to harm themselves when their boyfriends wanted to break up with them. They would get volatile. Some of them even, I think that incident where it was a female, she tried to stab her boyfriend. She, she ignored that and still stayed with her. Well, you let, know, me, these, um, let me I'm ask sorry. you this. You say you just got out of college. Like, like, like respectfully, I know, I think we have a, um, a difference in our, in our age range. Like I'm, yeah. I'm 35. I'm about to be 36. Like how old are you? Oh, um, um, 21. Okay. Okay. So, Mm-hmm. So there, there is quite a bit of gap in our age, and I and I got and I can't lie. Like I think it's refreshing to be able to talk to a person a little bit younger than me, especially for a person that seems to care about this issue and realize that it's something that needs to be talked about. Because one thing mm-hmm. that I notice is that our younger generation, between like the ages of eighteen and twenty five, really, they, in my opinion, they don't seem to show as much concern about this thing. That's really be kind of it's it's kind of becoming like a um, like a uh, it's a it's a black mark on their generation. So, mm. in your opinion, why do you feel like you know your counterparts, your friends, your your age range, your group of people don't see this as an issue that they need to discuss and talk about and try to change it? Mm, to be honest with you, um, oh goodness. Um... Uh, me personally speaking for myself and my friends, I I'm the kind of I'm the kind of person who always has who has a small group of friends and we were like minded. But um, I'm even answering. I'm still I'm trying to think about that how to answer that question because I don't really relate to these those type of people you're describing who are around my age. Um, I don't know. I I honestly can't really give you an answer because I don't know how they think. I never really thought about that. I always thought that the innocent children regardless of our, of my age or you know whatever your age is um they need protection i didn't it really didn't hit me until you said that now that people i guess from your perspective don't seem to my, my age reason don't really seem to show that much care i actually when you were on a, a live i actually my younger brother who's uh, just turned 18 i was having a discussion with him about your podcast and how much i love it um and i was talking to him about all the cases that you talk about and how you're the only channel at least as far as I know that I found that actually talks about this mm. and you know you listen yeah you are the only channel and I'm so glad that I don't know how I got to your channel because I actually used to follow Tommy mm-hmm. even though I mean I agree with everything he says but I, I did use to watch his um his channel and then I found him maybe because I used to watch him your channel got recommended recommended to me okay so which I'm glad for that and of course the people in the comments too it made me feel good to know that there's people who care um, but as far as, um, sorry, go back, going back to your question, as far as people who are my age, that year you say that, I, didn't, I guess it really didn't hit me that um, a lot of them, I guess, don't show that much care. Well, and, the re- and, the re- and let me kind of explain my thoughts. It's because mm-hmm. we live in an age now where you don't have to wonder what people think. Like, you don't have to just, like, like you don't have to put up a bunch of surveys. I don't know if you remember back in the day, but when I was in college, they used to have, and maybe some of these people in the chat can relate to this, like when they first went to college, if they were, you know, I'd say, let's go 25, 24, 23, 22, 22. Oh my God, 12, 13 years ago. That's how long ago 
<laughs> that made me feel <laughs> that made me feel old. About thirteen years ago, right when I was in college, and mm-hmm. um, we used to have this thing to where a lot of times when, when you wanted to go into the internet, you used to, you used to actually be able to earn money by taking surveys. You still might be able to do that nowadays, but mm. they used to always wonder what you think, you know, how you feel about this and that. They'd show you a commercial. Like they actually used to have it like in the malls where you could go into these these little um these little places, these little buildings that they were rent out and you could actually go in there and watch commercials and then they wanted mm. to get your thoughts on what you thought about this thing. So where we are now is you don't have to wonder what people think. Give you a perfect example. When mm-hmm. Facebook first started, the only thing you had was a thumbs up and a nothing. There was only a thumbs up and a nothing. What do you have now on Facebook as far as options to let you know, let people know how you feel? What what all do you have yeah. on there now? I would probably say these uh, so-called these emojis, correct? These emojis. Mm-hmm. Yep, you've got all of the built-in emojis, and it, matter of fact, in so many apps, they have it to where there's more than that now. Uh, focus groups. Thank you, High Vibration. They used to have focus groups. I ain't gonna lie, your boy participated in some of that because I was, I was, I needed some money, right? You know, but nonetheless, um, you have it to where it, um, I think it'll ask you like before you post, it'll say, "How do you feel? How are you feeling today?" And yeah. and and so the the whole thing about it is they want you to express yourself. They're giving you all kinds of options. Thank you, uh, Parker Lynn giving you all kinds of options to be able to express your thoughts, your feelings. You can go live. You can talk about whatever you want to. Everybody can go live. Everybody can talk about this and talk about that. So what you have is you have this very large, um, this very, very large pool of people posting thoughts, posting information, posting feelings, posting what they think. So you, you don't have to wonder what people think. You get to literally just scour the internet and you can hear what anybody and everybody thinks, right? Correct. So you don't have to wonder anymore. So I take that and I look and I say, it doesn't look like this is the type of thing that people are talking about based on the things that I see them share, based on the things mm-hmm. that I see them write, and based on the things that I see them say. And it's generally from that younger age group. But I got to also mm-hmm. say that even in my age group, it's it's even scarier because most of the people in my age group are parents. And I think it is mm-hmm. absolutely asinine for people my age not to be trying to preach and teach, in my opinion. What are your thoughts on that? I agree with you. Um, well, now that you, I guess, explain that, uh, I, that, that definitely makes sense. That's true. I mean, I don't have that have that many social medias, but that is true. From when I when, when I do go online, um, uh, I think only when I have a space, but when I do go online, I I do see that there are, there are, there are a lot of things that happen. Uh, okay, say for example, um, that that doesn't really show a lot. Of, I guess my peers that they don't really show that they really, I don't want to say genuinely care, but they don't speak about it. That is very true. I know that, um, I think actually before finding your channel, the first thing that, the first ever case that um, I ever saw was the, a case about um, a little baby named Baby Brianna. I don't know if you know about her, but that was years ago. And, oh gosh, that was that was my problem around my freshman year. And I remember that case hit me so bad. It, it was to the point where I, I felt like that was the first time I ever, I never really lost anybody. But I felt weird, it felt a little weird because I didn't know this, this little being, but it didn't matter. And I remember crying. I remember just being so emotional over this, um, her case specifically. And I remember I called my friends or just people in general. And uh, as crazy as that sounds, I was, I was being told, Oh, why do you care so much? But these are about people, these are around people my age. Why do you care so much? You didn't even know this, you know, this little baby or you didn't, you know, it's not like you knew her. That was, that was a response from a lot of people my age. So I do think, and I, that was just sickening. Um, so I, um, I do think there is a there, there, there's a plethora of people out there who are my age and older who really generally just don't care, mm-hmm. and it's unfortunate. They they don't really care. It doesn't affect them, so they don't care. It's only when it affects them that's when they want to, you know, um, uh, make it into a big deal. And I think that's very telling. It it sick me I, that you it, it shouldn't have to be somebody who is of blood. You know, life is a life. Correct. I agree with you. Let me let me also ask your thoughts on this real quick. Because this is something else I've also talked about quite a bit is the fact that I don't believe that people hold the people that do children this type of harm as responsible as they should. And if you don't, then that type of mentality can can get passed to other people because they don't see any accountability. They don't, Therefore, mm. they don't see this as being a, a wrong thing. 
Which the is person, dangerous. The like, person that created yeah. this GoFundMe, it's on the screen right now. Tamasha McClinton is the organizer for the GoFundMe for those girls. Okay? Mm-hmm. And it said, despite the action of our mother, mm-hmm. who that sounds like that's the daughter, despite the action of our mother, she was kind and sweet. Mm. I see so much of uh, I see so much wrong with that. She also said she was loving and would help anyone. She loved her children and grandchildren and will be missed. That's the type of thing that I would piss on a GoFundMe for because I don't believe that you can ask for sympathy for someone who would take the life of innocent children and then turn around and say that this person was a victim? I think that's bull crap, and it's beyond bull crap. Yeah, it's just sickening. Um, like, like I was saying, I was just before I even I, before I even got on this live, I was talking to my brother about the other twin girls that um were murdered by that other monster, and I was telling my brother about this sister. I believe it, it was in last live or a few lives ago, and I remember that um the sister won the um. Um, what's it called? The news reporters were asking her about what she, you know, what she thought her sister did, and she said, "Oh, her sister was a good person." I remember that stuck with me, and I remember I was telling, I told my brother how sickening that was because there's some other monster that's listening, and they're thinking, "Oh, you know, I'm going to use the fact that oh, I'm a, um, I'm postpart, I'm going to use that excuse to, mm-hmm. um, to do these, you know, to do these disgusting things, and people are going to, and I think, in my opinion, they're just as sick as well. There's no way you can." look at something like this and use excuses you're in i won't say enabling some people do enable enable like the so-called family members they enable they see these uh they see these, they see these red flags at uh, i.e the um the so-called mother putting at asinine or what is it a poison into the, the, the little girl's drink so i'm pretty sure there's other family members or relatives whatever you want to call them that were aware of that stuff i, be- I, I even- believe so and that's part of why i also said that somebody else knew and not only if they knew then they gave this mother that second opportunity. I don't know if you remember me saying this on my show, but I have a saying that I say, and I don't believe that a a parent should get a second opportunity to kill a kid. You remember me saying Mm -hmm. that? Yes. That that goes for any person that has custody over children. They should never get a second opportunity to hurt children. So not only does that apply for people that have been caught for doing things wrong especially like when C- in cps situations if they take the kids away from abuse or for attempted murder or anything like that those kids should never have an opportunity to come back to those folks and on top of that the right. people and, and i know that i've had some people get mad at me about talking about criminals in jail and stuff but i believe that if people are convicted for doing wrong things to children they should never have another opportunity in this life to be around children Correct. I agree with you. It don't apply to everything. You know, if people were dealing drugs, I'm not saying that they don't deserve an opportunity to try to live a regular life. If somebody did a burglary, I'm not saying they don't deserve an opportunity once they've paid their, you know, their debt to society. I'm not saying they don't ever deserve a chance. I'm talking specifically about people who are around the youngest and smallest and most defenseless of us Mm -hmm. are children they should never have a second opportunity to harm children i think that anything spoken outside of that i think is just plain irresponsible yes what do you what do you what do you think about that yeah i I definitely agree with that i definitely agree with you um also i just wanted to um uh, something that stuck out to me too. I think it wasn't only in your comment section, but other places too. I know some people. I think they they meant good by it, but I, I, like, maybe maybe this is their way of trying to rationalize it. But I know a lot of are a lot of people are saying some people in the state, excuse me, stated that um, well, because the girls were were I think were they were nine years old, uh, that they they were asking or they stated why is it that the girls went into the car with you know went to the car with her because usually like the other little twin girls you spoke on there were one years old, two years old. You know, they, they're babies, they're young, they don't really know what's going on, correct? Mm-hmm. But I believe that a lot of people looking at these girls, the, the nine-year-olds, oh, you know, thinking, oh, why would you get in the car with your mom? You know, you know, knowing she has a history of trying to harm you guys, harm you girls previously. Mm-hmm. And I was, I think I, I put in the comment section, you know, it's so, it's such a sickening state to be in because, oh gosh, it's, it's sickening because you know that's your, 
I don't even know what, what was even in the mindset of those babies, but to know that the person who's trying to harm you is your mother. I think well, it's like, well, uh, let me, uh, let me, let me say this. Well, not a, not a mother, a, a breeder, but. Well, let me, sorry, let me, ahead. let me say this because I think I can maybe give some clarity and let me know if this is not, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not clear enough. Uh-huh. It, it number one depends on when that incident happened when she tried to uh to feed them and i freeze if it were like uh-huh. day, if it were days ago i think that yeah uh-huh. maybe maybe the kids should have had some type of wherewithal to know okay hey this something's like about to happen you know what i mean or uh-huh. if it happened months ago even if it happened a year ago then you know maybe they weren't they weren't they weren't mentally prepared they didn't see this coming but at the same time yeah. they still have the excuse that hey this is their mother. They really didn't yes. have much of a choice in this situation. Yes, that's kind of exactly. where I'm coming from. Yes, and I'm just saying, even like the the, the mental psyche of that of knowing. I think how, it's, it's like bond that bond that I think babies or children have with their parents. It, your your parent, your a, a real parent, is supposed to, I believe, as a mom and a, as a mother and a father, you're supposed to protect your child. And I mean, like I said, I'm using myself as an example. I experienced that. It's difficult, especially at that young age, to try to you know, really um, mentally process of this person. And I'm, I'm pretty sure the, the auntie freeze, in my opinion, wasn't the first incident. I, I'm pretty sure she had several incidents on how she treated those girls poorly. And I think as at, at that age, those nine-year-old babies, they probably had an issue in processing this person who I just internally love and care for. It's who's supposed to protect me is doing this to me. And, it's, it, you know, I think it's obviously bigger than, I want to say that term, you Stockholm Syndrome, especially when you're nine years old, you're dependent on this person, you know? Mm-hmm. Um so I know they probably felt like, oh, uh, you know, there was no way for them to get out. And even if they wanted to, is that mental bond of, of confusion? You know, the, like I said it before, the person who is supposed to protect and uh, protect and guide you is causing harm on you, or is, is like the anti is trying to harm put harm on you. So I know it's probably difficult for them to even process that. And even, I mean, I don't know how long ago that that incident with the anti freeze of the the juice that she made for them, how long ago that was, mm-hmm. but. Because I, um, I think even, that part is definitely important as the win. Yeah, I think that's important. Yeah. Um, but even then, I, I don't feel like that was the only incident. I'm pretty sure there was so many, so many incidents. And, and knowing that situation, I don't even, not knowing the situation, excuse me, I don't know what she could have said to the girls to get them in her car. She could have said, oh, we're going out shopping for you girls. Oh, you know, since the, I think one of the neighbors said that she apparently took them out, I guess, to put, uh, you know, save face out there for people who are the outlookers to, to make it seem like she was a decent parent, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe she could have told the girls, oh, we're going out for so-and-so, we're going out for, you know, whatever, and they may have thought, oh, okay, it's just, I, I, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm speechless. I'm just trying to process what these poor babies went through mentally, trying to, you know, probably thinking to themselves, oh, my mom, you know, I, I think they're always probably mentally in turmoil of trying to process like this monster having a monster as a as a female breeder and just how mentally draining that probably probably would have been because probably one minute she's probably faking out there faking to them that you know she generally cared what she didn't maybe just like i said to put out there to put to put to, to make face that um to the, out, the outlookers that she was a decent parent which she wasn't while the girls are probably hoping you know oh maybe she um that she actually was generally that she generally cared Mm-hmm. You want to go ahead and give us um, your closing thoughts, and then we'll close it out. Yes, I'm so sorry. I guess it's gone on for a while. I didn't realize that. Twenty minutes, geez. Um, yeah, thank you for letting me call. And this is my first time ever doing this. I was a little nervous. Um, I'm next time I guess going forward, I'm gonna be more clear in what I write. I know you can't be as detailed in the comment section. Right. Um, and if I ever need anything or ever need to clarify anything, I definitely will be calling to clarify. Or if I ever, you know, want to just call and talk about anything i i will got you not not a problem like i say you know um i do have the ability to open this up from time to time i don't do it often but like i say i think it could be you know a productive thing but thank you very much for your time i appreciate you calling in thank you sir all right i want i want to see you in the chat all right definitely goodbye all right bye all right, guys, man. Yeah, I think she did great for a first time calling in. So shout out to Mia Pia, shout out to uh, Parker Lynn, um, and as well as a couple other folks, man. Thank you guys so much. I think that wraps us up. Give your number, uh, Sami Moha. I don't even let me see. I don't even know what that even stands for. Like, what you want my number for, Sami Moha? What you want my number for? 
Give me a good answer to that. And maybe I might think about giving you my number. <laughs> Let you troll the shit out of me. Matter of fact, you donate enough, I'll give you my number for real. I don't, I don't mind. I ain't scared at all. But guys, that concludes the show. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, man. Thank all of you guys. Again, thank you to all the people that uh, that donated um, earlier in the show. Um, and uh, the two, there was uh, one other person. I can't remember who donated in the super chat. But I appreciate you guys so much. I've got a splitting headache right now. And I have to go move around. Mia Pia, thank you, sweetheart. I think you did an excellent job. I mean, but you also got to understand something about me. It's like, yeah, 1-800-TROLL-J now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, like I said, man, I definitely appreciate you. But I, I used to work in customer service. So, you know, me dealing with the... Uh, with people and phone calls and stuff like that. I, I'm really, really easy to deal with, you know? So yeah, I'm really easy to talk to, but yeah, man, thank you guys so much. That wraps up the show and I'm going to go ahead and close you guys out. I might play maybe once. So yeah, I'm gonna go get some Excedrin or something. Cause this crap that I got is not doing me any kind of justice right now. I mean, my, there's no reason my head should be hurting this bad. Like my whole face, my stomach, my just everything hurts. So I'm I'm really thankful to be honest with you guys. I'm thankful that I was even able to get through this show and I think it made me feel a little bit better. Uh I'm new. How can I donate, bro? Uh links are in the description box. Just click one of those. If you uh send anything four quarters and above, that's cool. So that means nothing less than a dollar. If you send anything less than a dollar, I will have to send it back and I will have to block you. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. If it says anything less than a dollar, then just, you know, don't worry about it. We have enough people that support our channel and believe in our message, you know, so if you want to contribute, you know, anything that you want to contribute, anything four quarters and above is great. And I want to thank everybody that continues to believe in our message and what we do here. Uh, what do you, what video do y'all want to see that I've already played? So I'll give you guys a, a few choices. You're 15, you don't got anything. Well, do me a favor and just listen sometimes. Just kick back and listen. Uh, check out the show when we're live. And I think that you can always learn something. The cool thing that you'll re realize is if you're 15 years old, my daughter is 11 years old. And she loves listening to my show. And I ask my daughter questions about when she listens to my show. And she'll tell you like, hey, man. You know, my dad be on it and she teaches that kind of thing to her, uh, to her friends. And, you know, again, we're trying to spread a positive message and trying to get these people to realize that our children are important. So our channel has no bounds for who can listen to it, no matter what race, no matter what age, no matter what group, no matter what country, everybody can learn something from what we talk about here. We are a part of Soto Nation. And we are the AFC. We are the advocates for children. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thank y'all for dealing with my raspy voice and my headache, man. I feel like crap. So y'all say, I'm going to hear some Kurt dog. I'll give y'all some Kurt dog. I'll give you some freaking Kurt dog. Y'all have a great day, man. Love you guys so much, man. Peace.